Thanks for checking out this movie review video. This is for the 2020 release Fear Farm. And since this film is from 2020, I'm not going to have spoilers in this really. Uh, so, you know, you can check it out yourself. Uh, either check out this video after you've seen it, check out this video before you've seen it. And either way, it should, you know, give you some idea of how I felt about the film and break down a few things that mainly I had issues with. Uh, I do need to say up front, I wasn't a big fan of this film at all, but that needs to come with a disclaimer. And the disclaimer basically is, I have a lot of respect for filmmakers in general, for every filmmaker pretty much, except Glenn Danzig. <laughs> um, but other than that, every filmmaker I have respect for. So even if it's a film I don't like, I hope there are fans out there of those films. I know there's at least one person I know of who recommended this film to me who does like it, so that's a good thing. I always hope that when people make film that they find an audience. For this film, I am not the audience. I actually have a long list of things I didn't like about the film, and I'll talk about that. But just know that if anyone who is involved in the film sees this review, I have a lot of respect for you for just making a film because I know it's not easy. So there you go. And hopefully this can be taken as constructive criticism. So uh, this is directed by Dante Yor, uh, who did Fear Farm 2. Yes, there was a Fear Farm 2. I don't know if that's out yet. I didn't actually check, but... I found it interesting that they were re releasing Fear Farm and Fear Farm 2 in the same year, or at least trying to. Um, I assume that maybe they shot the whole thing uh, for both films uh, at the same time, but I'm not 100% sure. Uh, he also did films The Fragile Unknown and All of You Will Die. Uh, this was written by Yor, as well as Mark S. Allen and Howard Bird, who worked together on scripts for... Fear Farm 2, and Apparition, and Ball Buster, which that one looked kind of interesting. It uh, looked like a comedy, maybe. Uh, this was filmed at Cool Pumpkin Patch in Dixon, California, which is actually the largest corn maze in the United States at over 60 acres, which I thought was really interesting trivia. And I will say that there are a bunch of drone shots. Well, I think this is like three separate times in the film where they do kind of like a drone shot of a large expanse of the corn maze. And it is impressive. It's very, very cool. And I will say one of the things I liked about this film is the location. The corn maze location is a great idea. This specific corn maze, especially when you see the drone footage, is very impressive, very interesting looking. So I like that aspect of it. So location idea, good. Uh, I'm down with that. So quick synopsis of it. Uh, basically bunch of uh, young kids, probably in their 20s is what it seems like, uh, go to a haunted corn maze and things aren't good. I mean, that's basically all I want to say because I don't want to, I don't want to give too much of the film away because there is a twist in the end. Like there is an actual twist to the film and I'll talk about my thoughts on the twist without telling you what the twist is, um, but I'll go over earlier stuff in the film first. Uh, it does have a good opening scene that really is a good attention grabber, which a lot of good films do have that. So I was very happy initially with that kind of attention grabbing scene. And the music with it was good. And this kind of gets to one of the things where the music is kind of very Jekyll and Hyde in this film, where I feel like when it's the parts that are supposed to be more scary, more tense, the music's good and it matches. And I like that music. But when the music's more... Um, you know, run-of-the-mill things going on, things that are more lighthearted, you know, it's not trying to be scary or tense, that music's not good, and it's very generic and corny slash cheesy, so it's that's why I say it's kind of like a Jekyll and Hyde with the music. I like the way they handle texting in the film. Early on, there's texting. There's not a ton of it in the film, but uh, the way they handle texting is good because there are plenty of films I've seen where the way they handle texting is they just show you just the screen and just seeing, you know, the text going back and forth. What they did in this, which I think is the best way to do it in film, is you show the person texting and you're kind of looking over their shoulder. So you're seeing the screen and them, you know, actually acting in the scene. And then they're kind of having like a pop out of the text messages as they're going back and forth next to the phone. I think that's the best way visually to do it. And also, it's interesting because then you can actually see the actor interacting in the, the scene. So, I like how they handled that. The camera work is pretty unstable in this film, uh, which really annoys me. That stuff really, really annoys me because we have tripods. And I think that 
yes, I get that there are certain shots like you need to just have it handheld or over the shoulder or whatever in order to get exactly what you're going for, but you need to stabilize it the best you can. There are ways to rig up kind of really cheap and inexpensive like counterweight situations where you can kind of keep it more stable. The camera works really unstable in this film, so much so that at times where it's supposed to be a stable shot, it's like you're on a boat, kind of like seesawing back and forth, and it's a little bit nauseating. Um, you know, when there's too much motion of the camera like that, for me, I get a little bit nauseous from time to time, and this film kind of induced a low level of that for me. So, not good. You, you gotta, you really need to, to figure something out with that camera work. Uh, the dialogue is written to be pretty believable, in my opinion, um, as in the the way the sentences are, are structured and everything. Now, the delivery of the lines, not the greatest. The acting is really all over the place in this film. There are certain moments where it feels like the actors are kind of like in their more inspired moments and they're really kind of nailing it for what the material is. And then there are moments where they're really flubbing it, I feel like, and it's very, very inconsistent. Overall, I would say the acting is, eh. I mean, it's an independent film. It's very low budget, you can tell. So, you know, that stuff's, you know, forgivable to a degree. There's a bunch of comedy in the beginning of the film that feels off. Actually, there's a bunch of comedy in the film throughout. I thought it was just going to be in the beginning because a lot of horror films will do that where it's like introductory when you're not doing the stuff where it's supposed to be scary and tense. It's just comedy. It's funny stuff. It's entertaining. Um, they tried to keep it the whole way through, and I don't feel like it works. For that reason, it made me feel like the film was very confused. Do you want it to be a horror comedy? Do you want it to be scary? Or do you want it to be a scary horror comedy? Because the mix of how it was ends up being none of that, and it just feels confused. It's very muddled and... I don't think it works. The other thing is a lot of the comedic stuff I don't think was very funny. And part of that has to do with some of the actual concept of what the funny things were supposed to be. But some of it ends up being line delivery, how it's acted out, that just doesn't land because of that. It just doesn't work. It just doesn't work. Um, uh, I already read that. Uh, there's a part where people are getting scanned into the attraction, this haunted corn maze. And is very poorly handled that scene. Uh, they use they're using basically, <clears throat> excuse me, they're using like a little black light to kind of check people in. And then there's this really weird sound effect associated with it. I mean, I understand why they did it. I definitely understand why they did it. But it looks and sounds terrible. It's very cheesy. It it they there's a different way you could have done this. There's definitely different ways you could have done this. It just it doesn't it wasn't pulled off well. Uh, directing and cinematography in this, while there are some kind of more inspired shots in the film, for the most part, it's very basic. Um, there are a lot of scenes where they're kind of just setting up the same types of shots, very, very basic shots, just to get what's going on. Um, like I said, there are a few moments where it seems kind of inspired and there's like a flash of inspiration, but for the most part, it's just very basic, very, very basic. Uh, there's way too much setup before the meat of this film. Way, way, way too much setup. I think there's needed to be a lot shaved down from the beginning of it. Things don't really get going and get really interesting until about 40 minutes into the film. And the film, film with credits is only an hour and 19 minutes. So the fact that it feels slow, and it does feel slow, and you feel like for a lot, a lot of the time there's kind of filler thrown in there, that's not a good thing at an hour and 19 minutes. Uh, it really should be cut down. Now, if there's anything that a film like Host has taught us, then that is we don't even have to get near an hour and a half. You can just give us an hour film or give us under an hour film, call it a feature film, and that's what it is. You know, don't just throw in extra stuff, just throw in extra stuff. Now, with this, I think a lot of the extra stuff in this film was because it was supposed to be this comedy aspect to it. But like I said, it didn't really end up working, f at least for me. Uh, me personally, so just saying. But like I said, you know, hopefully there are a lot of people who liked it, you know. Uh, characters are not likable in this. The characters are very one-dimensional. There's really not much of any development whatsoever, and therefore you don't feel endeared to the characters, so you don't really care when the stakes get high. You don't care when it's scary. You don't care when it's supposed to be tense. You don't care about any of that. And the characters, 
you know, in addition to you not really feeling much about them because they're not really well established or developed, they're just like they're 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 actually not likable. Like you you are annoyed by them a lot of the time, especially because some of them are just so over the top the way they're written and the things that they say and the how funny they try to be that you're kind of like can we just get to offing these characters right now? Because I don't need them on screen anymore. So, yeah. Um, just about every scene in this film goes on a bit too long. Uh, it's where the editing needed to come into play to kind of edit all those scenes down a little bit. But like I said, I think they were trying to get as close to kind of an hour and a half or an hour and 20 minutes as possible. So that becomes a problem. Uh, it just feels like every scene is just too long. There's some good-looking drone footage of the corn maze. I already talked about that. Looks impressive. I did like that. It doesn't... Oh, I already talked about that one. It do, that it doesn't really get good until 40 minutes in. And even then, it still feels confused, like I was saying, with the comedy versus scary and, you know, what is it here? The action sequences are very clumsily choreographed and executed. That's another thing. You can see moments with these action-type... Action uh, scenes where people there's pauses of people waiting for the other person to do something and it's it, it's not super long but it's long enough that it kind of like throws a speed bump in the scene and you feel it like as an audience member you definitely notice it so they needed to do maybe some tricks with camera work to make that a little bit smoother uh is this supposed to be funny scary or both because it ends up being none of that like i was saying just how confused the film is there are moments where they randomly speed up the film, and it's really weird. And it's not where you would assume, well, actually, they did a few of these, where it's during, like, the action-type sequences where they needed to make it look like, you know, like someone was slashing someone or someone was punching someone or something like that, where you do it slower and then you speed that up. Like, I understand that, and that usually works. But they do it in other times where that stuff's not happening. They'll just, like, randomly speed up the motions of a character and I think it was supposed to give an effect of being, like, kind of scary, but it's just weird. And it definitely doesn't work. It's just odd. So I didn't really understand that choice. Um, the end reveal of what's really going on uh, is actually kind of a ridiculous concept. I give them points for trying to do something different with the actual, you know, twist at the end. Um, it's original, and so points for that. So good idea coming up with that concept, but... The way it's introduced and the way it's talked about and the way it plays out, it's ridiculous. It's just like over the top ridiculous. And I was like, is it supposed to be that way? Or is it supposed to be like people are seeing this and being like, oh man, that's crazy. Because that's not, I mean, that's not how it came across to me. It, it just really isn't. Um, so in summation, I put the location is cool and they tried something original in the end. So I have respect for that. Like I said, I have respect for all filmmakers except Glenn Danzig. That's all I have to say about that. So anyway, um, yeah, I mean, that's that's all I have to say about the film. Obviously, I'm not a fan of this. And like I said, hopefully there are people who are fans. And if you are, I'd love to hear in the comments your rebuttal to some of the things I was talking about. You know, what did you really love about the film? I'd love to hear that. And also, you know, do you agree with me? Do you not agree with me? Are you in the middle? Whatever. Just your opinions. Let's put it in the comments. And spo you can do spoilers in the comments. So that's fine. We can do spoilers in the comments so people know that. Now, out of five stars with half stars in play, I'm very sorry, but I got to give this a one star rating. I don't give a whole lot of films this low, but for me, this film can't go higher than one star. So I even thought about going half, but one star. <laughs> anyway. Uh, thanks everyone for checking out this review video. Uh, do me a quick favor, hit that subscribe button. If you like this review video or any video I have ever done on my channel, that is your best way to repay me because I'm not making money doing this or anything. I'm just kind of throwing this out there to build a nerdy horror community where we can talk about fun horror stuff. And um, yeah, it would mean a lot to me if, if you would go ahead and do that. Plus it's very quick and painless, so yeah. And then also hit the notification bell button because that way you'll know whenever I'm putting up a new review video or unboxing or haul video or anything that I do. Uh, yeah, I would appreciate that. But regardless, I appreciate you taking your time to watch this. And until next time, keep it brutal.